It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> My name is Jess. I also go by Jessica. This is for the podcast Change is Within Us. Um, also part of my YouTube channel, Ocean Within Yoga. It's been over a year since I've recorded on this podcast. So much has happened, so much has changed. Just want to give you a little update, life update. Um, I am excited to announce that going forward. I'm excited to get back into the consistency of this podcast, recording once a week and also offering video with said recording. So let's begin. <laughs> Where did I leave off? I looked back and I saw the last episode was all the way from like April of 2023, quite some time ago. At that time I was experiencing big change. I was moving out of my apartment, moving into a shared space, moved again, so much moving. Um, But ultimately the thing that I really wanted to do was to move out of the country. That had been my goal for so long. I always thought that that would be Costa Rica. That's where my heart has been. I love to surf. I just, I don't know, something about Costa Rica has spoken to my soul so much. But in life, take some unexpected turns and the opportunity to go to Greece arrived. Now this opportunity didn't come lightly. It sounds amazing, but with all opportunities comes a little bit of sacrifice. So in the time that I've been away, I had took on a management position at the yoga studio I was at, it became my full-time job, I was still teaching, but it consumed a lot of my life. And I would never take back any of those experiences. I learned a lot about how to run a business, how to coach other teachers, how to develop other teachers, and also how to build a community. Now, it took up a lot of my time and it pulled me back from every creative project that I was doing for myself. That's not always an excuse, but for me personally, when I find something I'm passionate about, I dive into it. I dive in until it's no longer filling my cup. For me, building someone else's business was no longer filling my cup. I love the company I was working for. I think that there's a lot of potential there, but I do believe there was some limiting around some of the things I wanted to offer and some of the truth that I wanted to speak. I love having creative freedom, and I wanted the ability to travel, to take what I love doing and embrace the lifestyle that I want, which shouldn't be impossible. We shouldn't be stuck or grounded in a place that we're not happy with. Colorado will always be my hometown. It's where I was born and raised. It's where my mom's at. I have a lot of good memories there. It'd be like a home base for me, but my heart wanted adventure. So the opportunity came up, some close friends bought a home here in Greece. They're next to, and I'm I'm hoping not to pronounce this incorrectly, Zero Pigido and Kaveri, right in between those two. It's a lovely home. Um, It's in a village, so it's along the mountains, a lot of curves and windy roads to get here, but it's a lovely home. I got to spend some time with them when I first got here, and then I had some time by myself. For me, being a Virgo, it takes me quite some time to adjust, <laughs> to say the least. It takes, I could take weeks sometimes. And I was in a little bit of a funk when I got here, a creative funk. And I had to do a lot of soul searching and exploring the why behind that. But long story short, I was a little homesick. It's, it's hard to change your entire life, to leave everything behind and end up being somewhere new and having all these ideas of what you want to create, how you want to create it, and then all of a sudden feeling stuck. You know, in that time that I was away, I learned I had ADHD, which also correlated a lot with some of the other issues that I was facing when I started this podcast. The biggest one was a binge eating disorder and body dysmorphia. That being said, the biggest change for me was the therapy. So seeking therapy, having a counselor, working together on what was going on. For me, a lot of it was around ADHD and focus. I'd have these big ideas and I would never get to completing them. I would be over anxious about being perfect or I'd get overwhelmed or overstimulated. And if that sounds something that you can relate to, know that you're not alone in that. It's a journey, um, one that I'm still working on currently. 
but I am excited to be in this space and to finally have felt grounded enough to put the podcast out, to set up, to record, to do all those things, and to let go of the fear that's surrounded around doing something new or getting back into something. We're creatures of habit, and so when we make something a habit, when we do something weekly, it's easier to come back to it than if we take a long break. So for me, in this time, it's been difficult to adjust to a new time zone, a new country, a new language, and also just missing my friends and family and a little bit of FOMO. Um, I can't lie and say I don't have regrets or I miss the studio I was managing. It was, it was easier almost to manage someone else's business and use my time for them than managing my own time. But see, it doesn't always have to be like that. And there is always change within us. That is why I named this podcast that. And it's still something that I truly believe in. And since getting here, I've done a lot of exploring in how I handle stress, how I cope. I've had to pull back from all the distractions that I had in Denver, which were a lot. There's always something to do. Um, I was consumed by my work. I, I You could call me a workaholic at some points. And... Managing a studio took me away from what my true passion is, which is teaching yoga and helping others find expression through movement to feel their emotions and to process them. I wasn't living in my truth. When you don't live in your truth, you just you feel uncomfortable, to say the least. It's just it's an unsettling feeling. Now, I got here at the end of May. It's been lovely. It's been very hot here. Um, this is Greece's hottest summer to record, earliest hottest summer, so it got hot really quick. And it's been strange not waking up in the morning and having this set schedule, or not waking up and having my cell phone right by my bed, expecting to see messages and texts and emails. It's been strange to show up for myself and me be my main responsibility. It's been strange doing therapy calls via Zoom and the internet not working and feeling this load of frustration and leaning into the fact that some things are outside of your control and you might just need to take a step back, take a break, and come back to it. When I started this podcast, though, I will say it meant the world to me. It felt like a place where I could be honest, where I could speak how I was feeling without worrying about judgment. And when I stopped this podcast, I was in a process of just so much change. I was going to sound kind of crazy because it's not something that I would normally do. Um, I applied for a show, yeah, on Lifetime. It's called Married at First Sight. And I didn't really know I was going to get it, someone scouted me on Instagram, and I told my dad about it, and he's like, you should do it, and I was like, I don't really think that's for me, I'm not really ready for marriage, and all the relationships that I've had have been pretty not great, so why would this be different? And in that stage of my life, I look back at it now, and I see that I just was seeking validation, I wanted approval so badly from my dad that I was willing to get married on TV. I, I think about it now, where I am now versus then, and I just wanna give her a big, big hug and say, it is okay, you do not have to get married. Long story short, I made it through the process pretty far, and they started going through my Instagram, my Facebook, they were looking at things from high school, asking me to take things down, and it became so overwhelming and I have this fear that if I got on my podcast and I spoke my truth, that there would be judgment around it or I wouldn't get picked because of something I had said. And a lot of discussion came up about my eating disorder. And it was almost like shame came around it. And that, it's just looking at it now, it's so sad because so many of us feel uncomfortable in our bodies. At that time, I felt so uncomfortable. And then later on down the road, when I didn't get it and I saw the casting episode that came out and watched it, I just, 
I looked at myself with such confusion because I was so far from where I was. And because I didn't get that show, I put my focus on other things. I finished my 300 hour yoga training, so I continued my education with yoga. I really wanted to get into hosting retreats and I wanted to get into mentoring other teachers. That meant a lot to me. On the other hand, I also wanted to become a manager. I wanted to learn how to run a business. I did that for a while. It was great. And this aching feeling came up, like I spoke about before, this, this just isn't it anymore. Like some of the values of this company just don't ring true to who I am. And this is consuming all of my time and my happiness. I look back at what truly made me happy and what made me happy was supporting other people, speaking my authentic truth, being creative, putting things out there, putting myself out there in the light that I get to choose, not the choosing of Lifetime TV and what they choose to cut. And if you have seen that episode, the casting one for Denver, a lot of those things are cut. I did not say those things in a row. Um, they didn't do me as dirty as they did some of the other people on that show. I like to think the universe saved me on that one. It was a bit of a blessing. Um, but um, they ask you questions and they cut them specifically so they can make the narrative. And it says so in the contract as well, too. Imagine, what if you could just make your own narrative? You know, why allow other people to make your narrative for you? You get to choose your life. You get to choose what you do. You get to choose what's not in line. And yeah, it might feel like you're stuck in something. I felt like I was so stuck in my job because it was something that I got to do full time. I was able to make the passion of teaching yoga a full time job. That was incredible for me. It meant the world to me. There was a level of pride in seeing the studio go from 50 members to 400. There was this level of attachment to that. But also there was this level of corporate and I'm not a corporate person. And I don't really feel like yoga should be a corporate thing either. It's more than that. And to take away the lineage of yoga, it just, it didn't feel right. I remember the last auditions that I was running, me and the other managers were sitting in the back. It was like, bring it on the movie. And it was just, it was so, um, just not me sitting there judging these teachers and saying, Thanks, Karen, you're good, you know, next, like, it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. What was for me was talking to people about what made them passionate about yoga, why it was important. It didn't matter to me how good they were at yoga. It didn't matter at the shape that they were, the size that they were. What truly mattered was the why. Was it because it's something that you like or is it because you truly care about helping other people? That is always the why. And when you find something that you're passionate about, something you love, and you find that you love helping people in that, and you find that it fits in your values, continue to lean towards that. That's, that's what I'm currently working on. Before I left, I had saved up, I would say, I don't, I don't wanna put a number on it, but I saved up enough to survive here for three months on my own without having to have a job so I could focus on creating. And when I got here, there was some ups and downs. Um, I had thought that I was gonna have the space to myself the entire time, but instead I spent you know, a month with my lovely friends who I consider like second parents, and we got to do a lot of exploring. And I had to surrender to the fact that I couldn't be this workhorse that I always was. I had to slow down. I had to enjoy being here first. And then once they left, I was a little bit in a funk. There was issues with the Wi-Fi. There's there's been so many things to work through here. Um, outlets are different, plugs are different, um, power sources are different, certain things wouldn't charge. It, it was this, just so many things kept piling up and so much of me wanted to just give up and just say, what, oh, I'm just gonna go back home. I'm just gonna go back to my job and this is it. And this immense sadness came over me that knew that that can't be it. You can't just give up. It can't be perfect. We can't have these expectations of how something is gonna unfold because it might not go that way. We can't limit ourselves because one thing went wrong. And as I work with my counselor through my ADHD, 
I find that a lot of the things that I had been stopping were because I would get frustrated or distracted or consumed with perfectionism. I also found that saying no was really difficult for me and it came from a place of me being scared of being abandoned. And for me, it was almost like if I speak my truth, Who's going to abandon me at the end of the day? Who's going to be there? What if I'm there alone? It, you know, it's been a journey being here. It's been truly transformative. The biggest thing that I've learned is nobody knows. Nobody knows what you need more than what you do. You do. Deep down inside, you know what you need. And that intuition that's there, it's going to tell you what's right, what's wrong. And it's not always going to be perfect. And the journey to change isn't always easy. It's very uncomfortable at times. But when I wake up in the morning and I walk out onto my porch and I see what's around me and I realize that so much has changed, so much. Even listening to the last podcast episode I did before filming this one, I just am in awe because I'm not that person anymore. We're constantly changing, always. And the depth of who we are is so vast, it's unexplainable. And so I'm excited to be back on this journey with you. This podcast is about change. It's about creating healthy habits. It's about loving yourself. It's about whatever you need it to be, even if it's just a support, just something to listen to as you're going about your day. Just know that you're never alone, never alone. It might seem like when you go on social media or you talk to friends that they're on a highlight reel of life. But the truth is, everybody goes through struggles. Every single person has their own story, something that they have to go through. And every single one of us has belief systems, things that we wanna change, things that we were told as children, that we experience as adults even, that are stuck within us that we need to work through. Let that be through yoga, through therapy, through breath work, through movement through journaling, through writing, whatever comes to you. But I am truly excited to be back. Nervous because getting back in front of a camera is super weird to me. The mic <laughs> is super weird to me. The tech stuff has been really weird for me, but today I see this shimmer of hope and it's gonna be okay. And just trust the process. Let it be what it is. That's all I have for now. I'm excited for next week. I'm gonna put this one out now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. One other thing, um, on my YouTube, Ocean Within Yoga, I'm working on a series right now in honor of being in Greece. It's called the, wow, geez, sometimes, Greek mythology themed yoga flow. I don't know why that is so hard for me to say sometimes, but it is. So, the sequencing of these classes is based off of Greek gods and goddesses. Each class has their own god or goddess that the class is themed after, from correlating poses, affirmations, mantras, all to go into that. And these classes will be about 30, 30 minutes to an hour long, all level classes. Super excited to offer this for free on YouTube. This is gonna kind of kickstart the process a little bit. I loved themed classes and I really miss teaching classes live in person. So we're just going to do it online. Um, and hopefully if the Wi-Fi gets figured out correctly and I can test it, I would like to do some Zoom classes live for my friends that are in mountain time, like Colorado. We're on a nine hour difference. So your morning will be my evening, so it'll definitely be an afternoon for me, a morning for you. Otherwise, I don't think it would work the other way around. <laughs> it's funny, when I wake up in the morning, I don't really have many texts on my phone. Um, and then as I'm going to bed in the evening, everybody's awake, everyone's texting me, um, and I'm tired. I'm like exhausted at that time. And so it has been different, different and hard to communicate with people. But I find myself to be an introverted person. I can be extroverted when I need to be, but how I truly fill my cup, how I recharge my battery is by being alone. So today I was in a funky mood. I just went to the beach, went to the sea, put my little fins on, put my snorkel goggles, which look really funny. Um, <laughs> this look kind of nerdy. And I just swam for like an hour and a half, got out, and I just, I felt different. I felt better. And so,
So I want you to think about that today. Think about the thing that you can do at any point in time that's just gonna make you feel better. Just even if it's a simple, when I go get a slushy, I feel better. Right? Well, it's gonna be a little sugary, so maybe 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 not. But I mean, what makes you feel good? What resets you? What resets you but in a healthy way? Breath work. In the morning, what resets me is yogurt with honey and walnuts, and a banana, and like, I just puts me in a good mood. A cup of coffee puts me in a really good mood. Um, yeah, whatever that might be for you. Petting your cat. I miss my cat to death. I miss her so much. Um, yeah, I've had nights where I cried because I miss her, and I, I have this bracelet that has these bells on it, and I... I'm not wearing it now because when I hear the bells, she has a bell on her collar and it, it makes me think that she's like there and she's not. Um, but you'll find those things. That's all I have. I could go on forever. I am a rambler, a, 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 a rambler. I was going to say rambler, yambler. Rambler, yambler. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm excited to be back. We'll see what happens. It's, it's all up from here, baby. With love, with light, with all the good things coming your way. See you next time. Bye.